Today's video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar and heat pump experts in your area that can help you get solar on the roof of your home, generate power through a local community solar project, or have a heat pump installed. In the last 150 years or so, electricity has truly transformed the modern world. It provides light for our homes, it makes modern long distance communication possible, and it even, for some of us, powers our transportation. And thanks to massive advances in renewable energy generation and energy storage, it's now possible to use electricity in remote places that do not have any connection to a mains electrical grid. Today's modern electrical grid is cleaner than it's ever been before, thanks to an increase in renewable energy generation and deployment of grid-tied battery packs. And the more we offset fossil fuel with renewably generated electricity, the lower our overall collective carbon footprints become, which is one of many reasons that we here at the channel support the transition to cleaner, greener, safer, smarter and more equitable transportation solutions. But there are two areas of modern life that, for many, are still powered by fossil fuels – cooking and heating. So today I'm going to discuss if you should buy a heat pump for your home and how you should go about getting that heat pump installation process started. In 2018, an estimated 40% of our global carbon dioxide emissions came from heating. And while many countries around the world now mandate that new buildings use more sustainable forms of heating than gas, coal, oil or wood, it's important that those of us with existing fossil fuel heating systems consider making the switch to a less polluting form of heating where possible, which is where heat pumps come in. Unlike traditional fossil fuel power heating systems, which usually burn fossil fuels to produce radiant heat or burn fossil fuels inside a boiler to heat either air or water that's then pumped around a building, heat pumps work by using electricity to move heat energy from one place to another. Heat pumps make use of the same physics principles as refrigerators and air conditioners by moving heat energy around using a series of refrigerant pipes, compressors and radiators, aided by a very special refrigerant with a very low boiling point. And look, while I could get all nerdy and explain things to you in more detail, I would frankly be giving you a subpar version of what's already online, courtesy of the lovely Alec from Technology Connections. So if you would like to know the ins and outs of exactly how heat pumps work, and I really think you'll want to know, you should go ahead and follow the links here or in the description to Alex's very awesome videos on the subject you won't be disappointed. Because heat pumps move thermal energy rather than generate it, they can transfer 3 kilowatts of heat energy for every 1 kilowatt of electrical energy used, which makes them more economical to use compared to any other type of heater out there. For a long time, heat pump technology was viewed as something that you could only make use of if your winter temperatures weren't very low. Given that heat pumps can reverse their operation in the summer to function as air conditioning during hot season, they've traditionally been very popular in climates where air conditioning in the summer is considered either essential or very nice to have, but also where winter temperatures never get particularly cold. However, as heat pump technology has improved and new refrigerants have been introduced with lower boiling points, we're now seeing heat pumps that can reliably provide heating to homes at temperatures down to around minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about minus 20 degrees Celsius. Some heat pumps can even operate at lower outside temperatures, but do so by making use of a supplemental resistive heating element that activates in those super cold temps. Now you know a little about how these operate, should you actually buy one for your home? I'll answer that in a second, but first there's something that I would love you to consider buying to support the channel – our limited edition Halloween t-shirt.
That design is my favourite Transport Evolved special t-shirt to date, and if you choose to get one for Halloween, you'll be helping us out too. You could even pick this one, which is our design from a few years back. So where were we? Oh yeah, should you buy a heat pump? Well, the answer depends on the type of home you have and the efforts that you've already made to make your home as energy efficient as possible. While there are now generous incentives in many countries around the world designed to help you afford a new greener heating system, there are both state and national incentives here in the form of rebates, grants and tax credits in the US, but you shouldn't consider a heat pump system until you've taken some more affordable, simple steps to ensure that your home is properly insulated. This includes making sure that your doors and windows have functioning seals on them that don't let any cold in or heat out, making sure that walls where possible are properly insulated and making sure that your roof has an appropriate level of insulation in it. If your home is relatively new, it was built in the last 10 or 20 years, then the chances are you're probably already good. But it's likely homes built more than 20 years ago will probably need some top up of any existing insulation and perhaps some extra work to make sure that they are as energy efficient as possible. Basically, it doesn't matter how energy efficient your heating or cooling system is, if your home is leaking heat in cold weather like a sieve, your heating bill will be a little on the big side. Sadly, this is something I've learned myself. Our heat pump system is great here at the house, but our home isn't as well insulated as I thought it was, and it's something that we're gonna need to tackle in order to lower our collective heating bills when we're in the winter. And yeah, in our case, our heat pump system isn't as energy efficient as we would like it to be, because of the lack of adequate insulation up above. If you've made sure that your home is well insulated and you're interested in getting a heat pump installed, it's now time to look at your existing heating system as that will influence the type of heat pump that you can have installed. If you have a central air system, either for furnace-based heating or summer AC, you should be able to get a heat pump retrofit that will work with your existing ductwork and room registers. Some systems can even accommodate a backup resistive heater or a backup gas or oil heater to provide supplemental heat during super cold weather. Earlier on in this video, I noted that modern heat pump systems can operate down to some pretty impressively cold temperatures, but it is worth noting that the colder it gets outside, the less energy efficient a heat pump system becomes, as it has to work harder to extract a given amount of heat energy from the refrigerant loop as it gets colder. So even though it is possible, it's sometimes best to have a backup heating system for places where it gets super cold in the winter. I don't know, somewhere like northern Minnesota, for example. If you don't have a central heating or cooling system and you use in-wall or in-ceiling resistive heaters, then you're probably going to need to go with a mini-split system. These essentially operate the same way as other heat pumps, but they will rely on installing an outside heat pump like any heat pump, along with interior heat pump air handler units connected to the outside heat pump using a pair of cooling pipes. These indoor units contain a small radiator over which air is pulled, which transfers heat energy into or out of the room as needed. This is actually the type of heat pump I have here at the studio, and some of my air handlers are wall-mounted units, while others are ceiling-mounted. Of course, you can also get a heat pump system to help heat your home's hot water. And that's actually next on my list of upgrades for my own home after I've dealt with the roof insulation. Just like heat pumps used to provide home heating, using a heat pump to warm your hot water can save you a chunk of cash compared to a traditional immersion heater setup and can reduce your carbon footprint and of course your electricity bill. And while it is less common, you can even get heat pumps that operate as a replacement for traditional hot water radiator heating systems. That was to heat up hot water that's then pumped around the house to a traditional loop of radiators. 
If you don't know what these are, they are more common in Europe than North America, but if you do happen to live in a relatively old house on the US or Canadian East Coast, you might actually know what I'm talking about. Now you know about the various heat pump options available to you, you'll want to find an installer, which is where today's video sponsor, Energy Sage, comes in. Regular viewers of the channel might know Energy Sage's online marketplace that helps them connect with local, knowledgeable, verified solar installers across the US. But it now also offers a very similar heat pump marketplace for select US markets. Enter your address and a few details, there's no phone number required, and Energy Sage will help you connect with local pre-vetted installers who can help you navigate the process of getting an energy efficient heat pump system installed in your home. They'll help you navigate the process of applying for or understanding local incentives, and until you pick an installer to move forward with, the entire process is no obligation on your part. So follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free no obligation services and get the ball rolling today. If you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we at the channel will get a small referral fee, so you'll be helping us out as well. At this point in the video, I'm hoping that you're going to be interested in making the switch to a heat pump if you have a less efficient heating system, and you'll probably want to do some of your own research, so it's well worth checking out the DSIRE tool. It's a tool that's run by the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center at the North Carolina State University. It's also happens to be supported by our video sponsor, Energy Sage. It not only helps you identify exactly what local incentives exist for heat pump installations, but it also provides a great resource for identifying other funding opportunities how to help you install everything from a new electric car charging station to getting photovoltaic solar panels and much more. Finally, should you get a heat pump? Well, it's fair to admit here that heat pumps aren't exactly cheap, especially mini splits. And um, while you can get some significant tax rebates in the US towards that cost, both at a local and federal level, it is something that I think you should only consider if you're looking to add value to your home and or you're looking to stay in your current home for a really long time. While the payback period for heat pumps is reasonably quick, about the same as getting solar installed on your home, it is something that, like any investment, is best done when you're going to make use of it for many years to come. So how about it? And if you have already installed some kind of heat pump system in your home, tell me what your experience was like in the comments below. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you have comments, you can drop us a polite note below, reach out in the Discord chat room on Mastodon, or if you're a Patreon supporter, you can reach out in the comments there. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow the links below to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to our Kofi Bitcoin and Swag store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. Sadly, there's no Mac Easter egg on this video because I need to talk about the credits and the amazing people who support the channel. Scrolling on my right is a list of amazing Charged Up supporters, but if you are not on the list, thank you to Neil and several others of you for reaching out and telling us you weren't. I'm sorry, we've had some issues with the automated process we've been using and frustratingly, it's getting longer to fix than we thought it was going to be. And if you have recently joined and your name isn't on that list, I'm sorry. We haven't generated a new list while we try and sort out these bugs and redesign our end credits. In the meantime, thank you to all of the amazing people listed and all of the people who have recently joined Patreon. Our ad revenue is about $3,000 less last month than it used to be because YouTube is being stupid. So actually by joining Patreon, you're really helping us stay afloat and avoiding this channel, just quitting and shutting down and not making any more content. So thank you. And if you are someone who has $1 a month to spare, please do consider supporting us as we are still about $2,500 short every month that YouTube decides it's not gonna send ads our way. 
Shout outs go out to our VTG Patreon supporters, Alan Tupper, Andrew Martin, Bennett Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C, Hey Esker, John Tramal, Carl Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillingat, Regine Fallows, Sean Tucker, Stefan Framgen, Stephen Williams, Tesla in the Gong, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Carl Hodgson, Chris Asenta, Denny Hyde, Lance Schlarl, Linda Irish, Mike Weeder and Paul Nelson. And finally, big thanks to our off-grid supporters, Paul Conway, Kevin Burrowbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Burness, Robert Flannery, Aaron Han, Ellery Hensley, Rory Lertwin, J.P. Fagerback, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Knack, Joe Bresney, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnack, Nigel S, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on this channel. Plus, over on a Sunday, you'll see us on Transport Evolve Take Two. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks to Energy Sage for sponsoring this video and I'll see you soon. As always, keep evolving. <laughs>